Hi, I'm Tori Amos, and I'm on Love Line coming up next. Love Line is meant for adult audience. Love Line may contain sexually oriented content. Love Line, viewer discretion advised. everyone, please. Uh, I am Adam Carolla. This is Dr. Drew. He's a board-certified physician. He's addiction medicine specialist. He also experiments on monkeys in a lab that he keeps in his basement. <laughs> you know that? No, I didn't know that. You didn't know that, I Drew. It must be in my sleep or something. Alcoholic blackout, I think, uh, perhaps. <laughs> That's it. All right. It is our pleasure to uh, uh, have as a guest tonight not only uh, just a wonderful human being, but a wonderful musician. Tori Amos is our guest tonight. <laughs> So we will be checking in with the lovely, responsible and wild, all at the same time, Chris Magaha. Hi, Chris. Thanks, guys. What a long audience. Huh? All right, Drew, you ready, to, uh, you ready to get rolling here? I am ready. Let's go. You, you sure? <laughs> I'm sure. All right. Uh, Chris is at the phone booth. Chris, who do you have for us? I am over here hidden with Mike, and uh, he's got a very interesting question for you. Yeah. I went out dancing one night, and I met this beautiful young lady, and we were dancing and having a great time and kissing and everything. One thing led to another, and we went back to our hotel, and we started kissing some more and everything. And she, she started feeling up on me, and I started feeling up on her breast. And all of a sudden, I started going up her leg, and I felt that she had a penis. <laughs> After this, I was totally shocked and amazed, but since I enjoyed my time with that, this... That happened to me once, too. I was, I was alone, but I was still I was a little bit... I was caught off guard, I guess, is uh, what, what it was, girl. All right, right continue, so, Mike. But anyway, since I enjoyed being with this man, I was wondering might this make me gay or... No. I mean, well, wait a minute. It, would, it, would make it, him, it no. sure is close. Well, it would make him gay if he went back and pursued a relationship he's with this least, person. But gah. He may not be A, but he's got the G down pretty good. All right. But it, it, this has nothing to do with your sexual orientation. You, you terminated the relationship at that point, is that correct? Yes. What did you do when this happened? I was just totally shocked and I just left the hotel. And you've had no contact with this person since? Never. Uh, that's a, it's sad for that person. I mean, uh, I, but it's un understandable. The person deceived you, and they, they turned out to be something very different. But than what, what is thought. that person thinking? I mean, in terms of, do, uh, how do you ease a penis into the equation? <laughs> I mean, I mean, do they just, do they just figure that well, they're halfway home, and it. It may be somebody who is a transsexual who's going through the process of living as a female before they actually have the operation. That's, uh -huh. what, that's what happens. I mean, uh -huh. There were breasts. There was everything except the genitalia. Yeah, had some been big breasts. Converted. And this, this may, uh, phenotypically or externally, this may be a female in a few years. But uh, it well, sounds so like... you get a number at least. <laughs> I mean, uh... but Mike, I mean, it sounds like this, you were not comfortable with this. You terminated it. And what can you say? It's an experience, and uh, it has nothing to do with your sexual orientation. And you'll live to see another day. Okay. All right, uh, All right Mike. Get some glasses. You. That's my ultimate advice. It is time to bring out the guest. Uh, this is a woman who uh, we've had on the radio show a couple of times. It's just one of the most fascinating and talented uh, women walking on the planet at this time. Ladies and gentlemen, Tori Amos. <laughs> joining us, Tori. I absolutely adore you. Well, thank you, Adam. You are absolutely possessed when you play. 
and I mean that in a good way. I don't mean it in a Linda Blair way, but I mean when you are at the piano, and by the way, it's just Tori in the piano. There's no overdub sampling, a brass section, a choir behind her. It is just Tori in the piano, and she is like in a zone. I mean, what would you, you know what I'm saying? Well, I was brought up Christian. Very, 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 very Christian. So I had to put my passion in something because um, passionate behavior wasn't really sort of acceptable in the house. Hmm. Jim Morrison wasn't let in the house. Jimi Hendrix wasn't let in the house. The Mary, Mag even, the Mary Magdalene wasn't let in the house. Even Pat Boone had to wipe his feet before he came in. <laughs> But, um, no, yeah, unfor yeah, it, no, unfortunately, he could come in the house. <laughs> it was, but it's yeah. just, it was like a purging. This energy just flowed through you uh, into the into the piano. Well, I always said to my dad that my grandmother would have burned witches. Mm. She was a minister too. So my father was a Methodist minister, and both his parents were ordained ministers. Now you have, you have a new passion. This new organization I'm really interested in that your co uh, Calvin Klein's helping Rain, you promote. Yeah. Can you tell us about that? Um, RAIN is the Rape Abuse Incest National Network. And um, Calvin Klein has really come forward and he's uh, helping us out to fund the phone line because the phone line was really. I mean, it is a huge problem in this country. I guess they're going to show some video of you. Uh, with Calvin, with Calvin. Yeah. And what, he designed a t shirt for the cause? Yeah, I think I have it here. These um, t shirts. I mean, I, I personally, this, this is wonderful because I, I think that's one of the number one problems in our country. Yeah. Sexual and physical abuse is just unbelievably common in our culture. It's unbelievable. You guys have a phone number, I guess, for Rain. It's 800 656 HOPE, H O P E. Yeah. 1 800 656 HOPE is it on there. They put it up on the screen for It's them. a 24 hour um, rape hotline. So if you need to call, no matter what your experience has been, I think the main thing is sometimes people call up and say, well, you know, my friend has been gang raped, and I don't really feel like I've had that experience, so I don't feel like I have the, you know, the right to call. And that's, this is not a billboard chart of who ranks. You know, you don't get a number that your, um, what's making you feel terrible is more important or less important than anybody else. If something is, is really driving you sort of insane, and you don't feel like you can really deal with it, then you call this number. And it's, like, a, it's like an emergency room. It helps Wonderful. take you to your next step. That's fantastic. All right, Drew, right, you want to take a call? We'll, uh, we'll talk more about this as we go along. Oh, you know we will. So this now is Ryan. Ryan is 18. Ryan, what can we do for you? Uh, well, first, before I ask my question, I just want to say, Tori, you rock. Keep it up. You know, your music is really digging. It's really great for that. <laughs> My question is really kind of for Dr. Drew. Go ahead. Um, about a week or two ago, I, I got my penis pierced. Right. And, well, <laughs> a few days ago, yeah. I was having oral pleasures performed upon me. And it's just a, a thin wire hoop, and it got caught in her teeth, and she jerked her head, and it pulled it out. It, it, it ripped it out? It ripped it, ripped it out. It ripped your tissue? Yeah. Where was it? Or was it right, placed? right in the, right oh, in the you're, head. You're gonna need tissue after that. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not bleeding anymore, is that correct? Yeah, it's, it's not bleeding, but see, my parents are really, really conservative. So you can't go to a doctor, you feel? I, I can't go, because they'll find out. And How would they find out? Because I'm on their insurance. Word well, on the street, Drew, you know. Parents have a way. <laughs> Look, it, you don't have to go. First of all, whatever happens between you and a doctor after the age of 14, in most states at least, I think in all states as far as I understand, is completely confidential. There is nobody that can gain access to that information if you don't want them to have it, okay? Unless, uh, unless you're okay. threatening to harm somebody or harm yourself, that's the only time that information would be given to anyone else. So you can go under any pretense you want. Your parents have nothing, no, no right to know what you're going for, and then have the information given to the doctor. Was this a uh, Prince Albert? No, it sounds like it was just in the Prince head, Albert. right? Yeah. Okay. You, look, it can get infected. It can start bleeding again. Well, I've, it... I've got antibacterial stuff on it. Well, all right. I mean, I'm telling you something. Uh, you're taking a big risk not having somebody look at it and make sure it's not something. Will there be long-term damage? You think? I. How is there a big tear? It's not real big tear. I think it will heal by itself, but the problem is the potential for infection. Infections in that area can, can spread very quickly and be quite serious. So if there's any heat, any discharge, any... 
Any is there movement? any redness around there? Any fever, chills, anything like that? You've got to go somewhere right away. So I, I would encourage you to go first. But good luck, Ryan. That's, that's, that's quite a, quite a deal. Chris, who do you have for us at the Loveline Bar? I'm up here having a cappuccino with Josh, and uh, he's got a question for you guys. Hey, what's up? Hey. hey Josh. Well, I, I've got this interest, and I'm not really, I don't think that it's unusual, but uh, I've been made feel that it is. Uh, see, the deal is that I love watching my girlfriend give me oral pleasure, and it just really turns me on and just really gets me there. And I told her about it, and uh, she, she hates it. She, she does not like me watching her, and she gets embarrassed and all that. And it's become kind of a problem because now I kind of do it subconsciously, and she'll kind of look up and see me doing it, and she'll stop. And my uh, question could is... You, could you put your penis through the mail slot and you stand outside on the porch? <laughs> or, uh, I don't understand what you want. <laughs> Even I'm a little confused about that. All right, uh, Josh, we are going to unravel the mystery that is your penis and your girlfriend <laughs> after we take a look at a story in this video. We answer many questions throughout the course of the show, don't we, Drew? That's right. You can call us and participate here at 213-520-LOVE. It's a 24-hour line at 213-520-LOVE. We are back with uh, the lovely Tori Amos. And when we left, <laughs> I love Tori. <laughs> Uh, we, uh, we were talking to Josh, right? Right. At the, uh, Love Line Bar. Now, Josh has a problem in that his girlfriend doesn't like him looking at her when she is pleasuring him orally. Okay. And what does she, does she want a, a, like a divider between the two of you? Like, uh, like you hold up a, a cafeteria tray or something? Or <laughs> can you just watch TV? Well, I, see, I really don't know what I look like when I'm watching her do it. So, I mean, maybe the look on my face is, <laughs> has something to do with it. Well, how does she feel? Does she tell you what it, what it is that bothers her? Does she feel demeaned or? Uh... I don't know. She just said that it, it kind of makes her, you know, feel embarrassed. Like, she's, she's busy doing something and she doesn't like being watched doing that, I guess. Tori's got something yeah, to say about Yeah, but have you ever said, you know, I think you're beautiful and just watching you gives me more pleasure because I want to associate you um, giving me head, not somebody else. I mean, I gotta tell you, I wonder, there's sometimes, you know, I, guys, don't take this wrong, but sometimes you wonder, you know, is he thinking about the drummer in the band? I mean, is he thinking about, who's he thinking about? Right. Because you, because sometimes they're like, you know, your head's down there and you kind of get bustled and bustled. It's like, dude, the hairspray, you know. Wow. <laughs> and if I know, had a nickel for stuff. every time some yeah. Marine. <laughs> oh. No, but I mean, I do think that it's a thing. It's a wonderful feeling knowing that the man that you're pleasuring knows that it's you. That it's not some, um, I mean, nothing against all those girls on Friends or whatever, but it's like, <laughs> hey, babe, you're not with them. You're with me. And if you want to be with me, this is intimate. It's between us. Thank you, Josh. I think that says it all. That was brilliant. Let's talk a little more about uh, your organization, Rain. How did you? Uh, what led you into founding that? Are you the? You are the founder, right? Well, it, it kind of started with um, me calling my manager and saying. 
There are so many girls that are coming backstage that have serious problems. One night it escalated to a point where there was a 14-year-old girl that had been brought, brought backstage uh, who was hysterical. And I came back after the show and I said, you know what happened? I do me and a gun in the show. It's a song about rape. And um, I thought that might have upset her. So we brought her back and got her a cup of tea and said, what's happening? And she said, well, can I, can I go with you? And uh, we said, why do you want to go w with us? And she said, well, my stepfather raped me last night. He'll rape me tomorrow night. And when I get home tonight, he'll rape me again. He's raped me every night for the last seven years. And so, um, of course, we said, have you told your mother? And she said, my mother, forget it. She doesn't want to know. You can't tell her anything. So it just began with, I said, Arthur, I'm taking this girl tonight with us. That's my manager. And he said, Tori, you're crossing state line. You can't do this. And I said, you know, the vigilante I am. I said, yes, I am taking her. And he said, really? that, that doesn't solve the problem. Yeah. And so it, it got down to just taking somebody away from a situation. The FBI, they were going to come down on me. And, you know, then I was going to end up in jail and get, you know, a broom up my butt. And that's really gross. And yeah. then so I said, you know. But if you got to sweep, you got to sweep. Well, I mean. But I don't want to sweep on my hands. Oh, uh, right, right. I, I see. I, I misunderstood. Uh, I want to do a vertical, yeah. not a horizontal <laughs> right. sweep. So I said, um, you know, Arthur, we have to. What are we going to do? So it, be, it was like, we need to get the people that know information, like you know this, to the people that need information. Right. So that's why this show's so great. How do you get those two people together? Yeah. So we brought a team of people together. Right. Be uh, abuse is such a huge problem in our culture. It just, it's just, I think we're just beginning to scratch the surface of it. Certainly we hear about it a ton in this show. And it's just great that you guys have a resource out there. I and mean, we, we ought to give the number out again. It's 1-800-656-HOPE. Uh, <laughs> All right, Jessica on the Loveline phone. What is your question for us tonight? Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. <laughs> Hi. Um, Hi. The situation goes like this. Uh, I had an affair with a married man, and during the course of this affair, I became pregnant. Other than the married man, I had sex with another individual, but it was only one time. When the affair ended, I decided to file child support. And once we took the blood test, the test came back negative that it wasn't by the married man. So my question is, how do I tell this other person that the child is really his? The, the person you just had a one night stand with? Yes. Oh, what a tangled web we weave, Drew. Uh, we will get to this after the break. Hey, this is Rodney. I'm George. And I'm GR from the ballet dance troupe Dishwalla, and you're watching Love Line on MTV. <laughs> Drew, do the email thing. Uh, email is loveline3 at AOL.com. Don't forget to leave us your phone number if you want us to give you a call back. Also, check out the Love Line area at keyword MTV on America Online. All right, back with Tori, Drew, and Adam. And when we left off, we were speaking to Jessica on the Loveline phone. Now, Jessica is pregnant. Um, I don't know. Did she have her child? or? Yes, I did. Yeah, she had him tested for paternity, and it turned out not to be the guy she was having a sustained affair with. who was a married guy. It's some guy she had a one-night stand with. And, uh, well, I think they can... But, Drew, you can get pregnant just from having sex one time? Imagine that. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, then forget it. I'm not trying it. <laughs> All right. I mean, Jessica, I, obviously, there, there's sort of the bigger problem of why you choose these unavailable men and uh, what's going on there, why you act out in this fashion. But right now, this issue with this pregnancy is you have a right to, uh, to support from this fellow. God knows who he is or what his ability to provide that support is. I think you can even you can, you can contact local authority. The marshal will take care of it for you. Uh, but I, do, you know, do you know how to find the guy? Yes, I do. You don't, do you know his name? Yes, I do. Do you know where he lives? Yes, I do. Uh, really? I, I would just straight out contact him. And uh, if you have problems, it's time to call Legal Aid Society or get an attorney. 
and uh, you have every right to, he has, he has a fiduciary responsibility to support your child if he's over 18. And so it is. Thank you, Esther. All right, let's talk to uh, Emily, who's uh, over at Dublin's on Sunset Strip. <laughs> Emily? Hi, I was wondering, um, I've been thinking about getting my nipples pierced, and would I still be able to breastfeed? Answer that actually is, as I understand, you can. Uh, certainly, and certainly the, the devices, whatever you have in there, can be taken out. Uh, and I don't know if it makes it any more... Devices. Well, whatever they... People, I, 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 piercing, I don't get piercing. I just, don't I call it a hoop, a device. I just you don't know get you're it. square. <laughs> When you call a stud or a hoop a device. These devices these kids are wearing and these uh, neck devices. What are they called? A necklace drum? Yes. <laughs> They're all the rage. Now, I, I don't get piercing, but um, as I understand it, it does not, it does not prevent breastfeeding. Uh, breastfeeding is already a, kind of a difficult maneuver. People don't realize that uh, the mother and child have to sort of learn how to do this. They're, they're each hospital usually provide experts who teach women how to do the breastfeeding. And certainly... Really? They, they, Think they have an internship over there? Maybe I could right. get involved on a volunteer basis. All right, Adam. Drew. And uh, but I, it does not prevent breastfeeding. It might make it more difficult, but it doesn't prevent it. So thanks for your question, Emily. Now it's Trey. Trey is twenty-two. I would leave one nipple unmolested just in case there was some residual uh, effect to the piercing. That's I always idea. leave. I leave one good thing. That's why God gave you two, so you could pierce one. <laughs> uh, yeah, but enough. you guys don't have to, do you? I mean, you have nipples, but like the poor guy before that had the, he only gets one of those. That's yeah. right. That's, That's true. That means no, no piercing. No, that means if you get it wrong, you get it really wrong. Right. I'm not willing to chance that. I don't, I don't think most guys are, I mean, some guys really like the way it feels, and it's, it's just a drag that she had funny teeth, isn't it? Yeah. Well, there's your message. Don't date people with funny teeth. Or braces. Yeah. Hey, what are you doing for you? Go ahead. Um, yeah. 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 I just want to say that I think it's great that, uh, to be able to talk to Tori, and I think it's great what she's doing with Rain. Um, I uh, won wondered if you could help me with a little question I have. I've got sort of an, an unnatural obsession. I have this uncontrollable desire to see women's bare feet. Um, when I've had a girlfriend in the past, I enjoyed touching or kissing her bare feet. Um, but I'm single now, and when I'm in a public place, uh, like a park or, you know, wherever, wherever women are wearing sandals or walking around barefoot, I find it very arousing and will sometimes think about touching their feet. Um, I don't, I mean, I never act on it, but I was just wondering if this attraction is abnormal and how I can just sort of get over it so I don't find it well, so dr distracting. You need to work in a shoe shop. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Adam becoming the intern it's in the breastfeeding clinic. Right? I don't know, I think, I think women's feet can be, it's a beautiful thing. So, I mean, God, you could have picked other parts of the body that are kind of not so groovy. Well, uh, but, but I think it's a, uh, to me, I have no attraction, uh, to the woman's feet, except for, actually, the thing I like most about the feet is they're holding the breasts up. Which, so, so I do acknowledge the feet and their importance, at least in that role. But I think it's a self-esteem thing, isn't it? Because it's like, kiss my feet. Hey, look, I, I don't claim to know where these kinds of fetishes come from, but they certainly are not harmful. He doesn't have to worry about I it. I mean, Dr. Drew, how many men, and let's be honest, guys, in this audience, be honest. How many of you, when you see a woman with nice breasts, want to touch them? I mean, I think that a lot of guys, because I know I'm with a crew of 32 men. I have 32 guys on my crew. And they just watch these girls come in. I've got to say, guys, tune the piano. Guys, hello, back to work. I mean, they, it is not, women think very differently from men, even though it's like, oh, he's got a cute ass. It's like, hang on a minute, I'm fascinated how much men think about sex. And how visually preoccupied they And they're they very are. preoccupied. And so if this guy's in defeat, I mean, you yeah. know. So that, that sounds pretty benign. Benign. Don't worry yes. about it. I, that's his thing, Trey. Don't worry, OK? All right. I have a concern about him working at a shoe store, however. He could get a little bit uh, carried away. Trey's been in the bathroom for an hour and 45 <laughs> minutes now with uh, Mrs. Scholes, actually. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> All right, uh, Chris, who do you have for us? I'm over here with this good-looking guy, Jason. Come on up, and uh, he's got a question for you. How you doing? Um, I'm 20 years old, and I have a two-year-old son. And it seems like when I date women or I tell them, you know, I have a two-year-old son, it seems like that's the last time I, you know, I talk to him, I see him. And uh, so my problem is, is, my question actually is, how do I tell a woman that I'm interested in that I have a son without scaring her off? There are some people that you're just going to scare off. Uh, some... He's dating totally the wrong girls because he's a good-looking guy. He seems, you know, seems like really nice. I'm sure there's thousands of women that would love to go out there with There will, but there also are a lot wow. of young people that are overwhelmed by the idea of having a child. They don't want to raise somebody else's child. They don't want a child at all. They're not ready for that kind of commitment. It's very scary to a 20-year-old or 18-year-old or 22-year-old to take on that kind of a responsibility. But probably more women willing to date a guy with a child than yep. there are men willing probably. to date a woman yes. with a child yes, which I is kind of sad cuz it usually turns out that the women are the ones with the with the who need with the kids yeah yeah that's right it's actually the guy out dating is what caused them to be home with the well, kid. Well, that, that's the thing. Anyway. That's what I'm saying. He's obviously like screaming responsible here. And I think it's great that you're putting the kid as a, as a priority in your life and so you require that as part of the of the relationship. So it will work out. Hey, Just and I would it, at the beginning call him a uh, your your dwarf buddy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. I'm looking for innovative way. <laughs> All right. Put it in a little else, sir. is Aaron. Aaron is 19. What's your question, Aaron? Hi. Um, hi, Tori. I just wanted to say that. Um, I have um, a boyfriend that's somewhat violent. He hasn't struck me or anything, but he wants to do, like, violent things during sex and whatnot. And I'm cheating on him with another guy that's really nice to me and whatnot. But I'm scared on how to tell this one guy how... I want to break up with him and whatnot because I'm afraid he's going to attack me. All right, so it's intimidating. All right, this, this, is, this is pretty heavy, and it's uh, going to take some investigation, and we'll investigate it after we take a look at <laughs> Hey Jupiter. they get tickets so they can come visit you. They can visit you too if they're in Los Angeles or 18 or older and by calling for tickets at 213-896-3035. Again, that's 213-896-3035. All right. More Tori, more Drew, and more Me Too. And uh, when we left off, we're speaking to... It's uh, I'm Dr. Seuss all of a sudden. Uh, <laughs> We left off with speaking to Erin. Now, Erin has got herself in a little bit of a, a pickle because... Abusive she, she, boyfriend. Right. Having an affair with another guy. Who's not abusive yet. Yet. Who's so supposedly nice. What do you well, think? Well, everyone's nice when they're two-timing. Because, <laughs> it, it, it's, seriously, it should be the, next, the name of your next CD. But, but you're <laughs> alluding to something interesting, and that is that Erin is sort of maybe off in terms of her judgment on who she chooses to be in relationships with. You're, you're, yeah, if you're having a relationship with a guy who's uh, cheating on another woman in another relationship, you will then be take the role of that woman and the next new woman will come along and take your role. It is the uh, circle of uh, the wheel of uh, the chain of, uh, you know. <laughs> but the, but the fact is, that it, but as I bring up the point, is that you, there might be something in, internal within you that causes you to choose relationships that tend to be abusive. And it's just, this is apropos to what Tori's uh, helpline is about. I mean, people suffer forms of abuse in childhood and then act those same relationships out in adulthood as a way to try to master those things in, in childhood, which were so horrible. Did anything happen to you, Aaron, when you were growing up? Um, yeah, I was raped by my father since I was five. Okay, all right. And so having been through that kind of abuse, well, with, unless you were treated, unless you get some help, and this requires a lot of treatment over an extended period of time, that trauma is going to enter into every relationship you have from now on. There's going to be chaos, and there's going to be Im impossible difficulties trying to achieve real intimacy. Not well, only I've been I've been trying to get out of relationship um, harmful relationships, you know, and I've been seeing like a shrink and all that Good. to talk to him about it. And no matter what I do, I can't get out of it. I think what everybody's saying here is that there's something in you you're not able to get out. Now you have to look at that. There's something in you that feels like you don't have a choice here. You have a choice, but a lot of times people, be, they, they go to what they know. And it's the strangest thing, but sometimes you equate love with in a very strange way. Even though a part of you wants to get out, you're not out yet. 
So you've got to really look at that. Um, could she call your your helpline? Would yeah, she, somebody she, get she referred? could call it. And now she already has a psychiatrist and the treating but the treatment team. So but but I question. I really have to say to you that you need to maybe really think about who you're seeing. And and maybe I'm stepping lines here. But if you're seeing a psychiatrist, somebody who's trained, and you're still in an abusive relationship months later, you've got to go. Hang on a minute. What isn't adding up here? It's like wait a minute. Well, she's not following direction. I'm sure. And what the direction would be is no relationships for a while. Aaron, time out. Okay, time out for Aaron. That you stop having relationships, work on Aaron for a while, because every relationship that you're going to find is going to be abusive. Or if it's a quality relationship where there is a potential for intimacy, she'll push it away. you'll push it away. You won't be able to tolerate it. So no relationships, Aaron, for a while, just for a while. And in the future, there is the potential for a quality relationship. Yeah. So. Here is a thing that I think is interesting that uh, we have uh, talked about. Uh, that that we, I've been finding out because uh, we get so many calls and so many questions. Now, Drew, you knew that she'd been abused, abused yeah. because people aren't much different in how they respond to the stimuli. Right. You it, abuse somebody, this is how they behave in adulthood. Right. And, and we're, we're led to believe that we are a society built of uh, free will, a, free will and, yeah. and the individuals and that we all, you know, everyone's different and what's, you know, you can't say what's right for them is right for you and so on and so forth. And I'm not talking about turning this uh, into China, but there are certain rules that apply to human beings. Like when they want to study the mating habits of polar bears, they just take 10. They don't take every polar bear in existence. They just take 10. They watch them for a couple of weeks and they go, all right, now we know. And as sad as it is, Humans work that way too, in in a, in a in a very basic way. Right, not to take anything away from the individual, or, but but the fact is, if something happens at a certain period of development, there is a predictable outcome. Unless you go through right, the a healing, healing process. a healing process. And so when you said to her, you know, you really have to go in and look at yourself because it's easy to say, well, this guy's crummy or this oh, guy's no. crummy, it but maintains it, the defense. you're drawn to them. Yes. Right. And there has to be a level of responsibility. Even guys, if you're drawn to women who want to whip you and beat you and just urinate all over, you have to say, hang on a minute. There's something in me that I have to look at that I'm attracted to this. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks. Grace, who do you have for us? Adam, this question is right up your alley. This is James. Hey, guys, how's it going? You know what I think of when you say right up your alley. Oh. <laughs> All right. um, my problem is um, I haven't had sexual intercourse for three years. And uh, what happened was I had a real serious girlfriend. She took my virginity. And uh, I was in love with her. And she ended up uh, dogging me. So uh, ever since then, girls that I've dated have uh, I have no problem doing, you know, anything and everything with them, you know, such as oral pleasure and stuff like that, but I won't go all the way in the sake, you know, of getting hurt. And I'm stuck in between girls that uh, want to go all the way or nothing at all or uh, girls that just don't want to do anything. So what can I do to uh, get girls to meet me in the middle where I am? Uh, uh, Got to introduce beer <laughs> into your question, right? <laughs> well, you know what? You said something, you said something really interesting. You said, she took my virginity. Yeah. See, you're coming from a victim space. You gave your virginity. Or did she jump on top of you and put a gun to your head and no. say, give no, it she, up? Yeah. No. Because, so you Even then, I wouldn't consider it yeah, taking. <laughs> no, because no, men, men get raped, too. Yeah. So if you can say, hang on a minute, I gave my virginity. It was your choice. You did it. Then you take some responsibility. You know, you're not this helpless little person here. You gave, you gave yourself to somebody that you thought you could trust. Mm -hmm. It wasn't safe. It didn't feel good. But not all girls are like that. Some are. I was going to say, don't you think he's projecting you know? onto all these other women that he's, he, he he's is, having relationships with? But he asked with. a specific question. And I think this, and, and you're absolutely entirely correct in what's going on with him emotionally. But I would to answer your question specifically. I think a safer, more fruitful place for you would be to start with the girls who don't want to do anything, so to speak. Uh -huh. Because what you'll find is when you are connected with them and, and, and do create a safe relationship that is, is genuine, then suddenly a physical relationship will grow out of that. So you'll get where you want to go. Right. Okay? Thanks a lot. This now is Lily. L I L I. That's quite a name. What's your question, Lily? 
Hey, um, I've been intimate with a female friend off and on for like three years. And about six months ago, she caught herpes from another female. And we haven't been intimate since, you know, she caught it or whatever. But I was wondering if I wanted to be, was it safe to have oral sex if the herpes is in recession? Mm. Or is it still contagious? Uh huh. This uh, sounds like a job for dental dam man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, we will uh, get into this question after we take a look at Silent All These Years. to be inquisitive and you can ask all those questions to Dr. Drew and myself if you call what number Drew? Number is 213-520-LOVE 24 hours a day. If it's busy please keep trying. The lines will open up and we'll get back to you. All right. A little more love line to go. When we left off we were speaking to Lily on the love line phone and Lily's question was what was it? Happy. Drew? Oh, the happies, yes. Uh, Lily uh, has a, a girl that she's been having sex with on and off. Uh, that girl's got hooked up with another girl who then she contracted the happies. Which is an interesting case in point, uh, how, how readily somebody can get oral genital transmission of herpes. You can go from the genital to the mouth, from the mouth to the genitals. And Lily, if you have oral genital contact with her, you can contract it. You can contract it whether or not she has an active outbreak. Certainly, it's less infectious, less contagious. Okay. when there is an active, when there is not an active outbreak and terribly contagious if she's having symptoms. But it can be transmissible really at any time, okay? Okay. All right, use a that, dental dam. That's yeah, the way but around Nobody that. will use that dental dam. Well, look, maybe Lily will. By the way, just because you won't use it doesn't mean nobody will use it, okay? <laughs> Chris, uh, who do you have for us? I'm up here at the Cappuccino Bar with James, and he's got a question for you. Okay, I've been dating this girl for about two months now, and we've been coming very intimate with each other. Now, we're two types of people, you know, she's very kinky and I'm very, you know, romantic. And what I mean by kinky is, you know, she pulls out the handcuffs and dresses up in, like, characters and stuff. But see, my question is, is how do I bring romance into our kinky relationship, or kinky sex life, so that we can both be satisfied? Tori, can you help this man? Oh, what does she dress up as? Uh... Wonder Woman. <laughs> oh, well, and, but she have the, uh, that lasso of truth and everything? So does she like to dominate you then? She's very aggressive. Do you like that? Oh, yes, I do. Mm. You just want to bring a little uh, Frank Sinatra and wine to yes. go with it. Mm -hmm. Well, I think she should compromise if you're willing to um, be dominated. She should have a little bit of candles and whatever music you like. I mean, if you like each other, if you like to be dominated, and she dominates, but you kind of want to change the setting, say, you know, will you dance with me with your handcuffs? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really, there's not much else you can say except just propose to her what it is you'd like to do and see if you can reach a compromise position. I mean, you've said yourself you like being dominated, so that's something that... Uh, well, why do you like being dominated? Uh, it makes it more fun for me, I guess. Well, but it's, so it's not, it's really about adding to the relationship it's you're adding. looking for. It's adding. So the things that you I mean, like... I guess I'd like to satisfy her, you know, because she's satisfying me all the time. Oh, I think she's being very satisfied. <laughs> anytime, uh, anytime there's a Wonder Woman outfit involved, you can, you can bet there's satisfaction going down as well. Thank you, James. Bob on the phone, what's your question for us? Here's my situation. I uh, masturbate a lot. Um, average probably twice a day. I was wondering if there's like a finite number of sperm or if by masturbating so much I'm risking losing my sex drive later right, in life. Let me just let me dispense with Bob. It's, it hurts me to hear these calls after having such poignant advice from Tori, but let's let's deal with Bob's problems. Uh, Bob, these are real I know they problems are. by yes. working men. I understand that. <laughs> All right, uh, Bob, here's the deal. Uh, there is no finite amount of sperm produced in the male. In fact, the more you produce, the more you'll tend to produce, the higher testosterone levels will be. 
So being sexually active, sexually aroused, tends to actually increase your uh, sexual arousal and your sperm production. So like, but everything else is that way in your body, too. So like you don't just keep making blood, you'd explode. <laughs> You do keep making blood. <laughs> no, no, no. And if, but, you, and if you lose blood, you but, make it even more. Your body turns on. But, don't, but don't you, don't you, all right, but what I'm saying is, is if you had blood drawn out of you. Yes, you replace you it. You would replace that blood. Right. But you wouldn't keep going past the right. seven or eight pints right. you currently have in you. Right. But if you kept having blood drawn out, your body would charge itself up in such a way as to be able to produce more blood regularly. Right. But so, so there's many things in the body that sort of replenishes yes. itself yes. and then tops it off. And if you keep uh, emptying the uh, uh, sperm bucket, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to name my next band, by the way. Uh, <laughs> There is a little, a little corollary to this, and that is that if you're trying to get someone pregnant, if, if fertility is an issue, um, you can actually reduce your sperm count by, what do you call it, emptying the bucket? What was your, yes. what was your band? There's a hole uh, in the that, bucket. <laughs> yeah, right, in your case, there certainly is, sir. And, <laughs> There's a hole in the hamper. All right. And, and uh, you might want to wait a few days in between to sort of optimize the sperm count, but you will not run out of sperm. You will not decrease your sexual performance by what you're doing. All right. So, Tori, the number of your organization again, the... Uh... The number is 1-800-656-HOPE. And uh, Unlock the Silence is right. uh, the concert that is going to be played. You'll be able to call in if you want to be a volunteer to help professionals. There, there are people there that have been trained, and yet if you want to volunteer to, you know, help them. And now uh, you'll be able to do that if you want to do that. They're t-shirts. These are the t-shirts, I guess. These are the t-shirts. And um, every time you purchase one, part of the money goes to the con line. That's great. It's so. fantastic. Beautiful work you're doing, Tori. Thank you very much Thank for you coming. Guys. Thank you, guys. Oh, yeah. Boys for Pele. It's a great CD. And it's a great woman who's into many great causes, so she deserves to be supported. So go out and get the frickin' CD, would you? All right, also, uh, Chris Magaha, thank you very much. Hi, how are you? And until next time, I'm Adam Carolla for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. Armatron does it again, presenting musical Looney Tunes. Look for all the great Armatron watches at many of the top retailers across the country. Tommy Tang, LA's restaurant to the entertainment industry. A gift package of his personalized line of seasonings and sauces, best-selling cookbook, and chef's wear from Tommy Tang. Aroma Vera's aromatic gift crates. Indulge in the pure enjoyment of essential oil-based personal care products designed to enhance the beauty of daily life. From Aroma Vera.